Welcome back to the pancake world, where the world is as flat as a pancake, and today we're talking about the space station. So stick around if you want to see more. One of the few areas in the Flat Earth community that believers will actually agree upon is NASA. NASA's only role in its $52 million a day budget is to produce fake information in support of the globe Earth. NASA doesn't send people to space. They don't send satellites to space. Their entire existence is fraught. Now, believers will not claim that everyday workers are in on it, but rather they're just doing their job as they're told by their superiors, who are living in the lie. Astronauts, on the other hand, are viewed as actors, faking every step of the human space exploration program for the past 60 years. Today I'd like to take a look at the International Space Station and claims made against its existence. Or as Flat Earth believers will call it, the International Fake Station. I personally can vouch for the existence of an object that has the, the shape and outline of the ISS that orbits the Earth in its predicted positions. I've seen it many times from my backyard and I've even photographed it twice transiting the sun. But let's take a look at some NASA footage and claims of why this supports that it's all fake. These claims will generally fall into three categories wires, zero-g plane, and CGI. As you can see in this takedown video, Flat Earthers believe much of the live footage from the ISS where astronauts are floating around is purely wire work and green screen. If you do a search on YouTube for how NASA fakes the ISS, you will get many video examples of this. Now if you take a look at most of them, you'll notice that they focus on the same dozen or so videos and dissect them and claim individual components of those videos are evidence of the fakery. It's not a blanket claim, but for that video at that point in the broadcast. I'll admit that some of their points are interesting, but only if you shut out every other possibility for how to explain the videos. Many of you have probably heard of the Vomit Comet, the plane that conducts steep climbs followed by steep dives to create a sensation of zero gravity. In this environment, you actually do feel weightless and can do virtually anything that you see the astronauts do on the space station. The movie Apollo 13 actually built sets inside of a plane and filmed scenes for the movie to simulate zero-g. Here you can see Bill Paxton and Kevin Bacon throwing a football as a test to see if this method would work for filming. In the end, it did work, and that is how they filmed much of the movie to make it realistic. But there is one caveat, it only lasts for 30 seconds. If you pay attention to the movie, you will see that there is no individual cut longer than 30 seconds. Because after that fast drop to simulate weightlessness, the plane has to pull up again and climb before it does another 30 second drop. Flat Earth believers will claim that footage showing what appears to be weightless objects floating around were filmed in a zero-g environment of this plane. Some have even claimed that the entire ISS has been rebuilt in one of these planes. But considering the size of the ISS, it would probably take several planes to recreate the entire station. A large portion of the floating objects on the ISS are brushed away by Flat Earth believers as CGI. In this scene, you can see the ISS astronauts actually do use CGI as a gimmick for one of their public airings. But you notice that the object is real and that it was only masked by CGI until she was supposed to see it and hold it. The doll itself is not CGI. Some believers will claim that the bear is CGI and that the astronaut is wearing augmented reality contact lenses that allow her to see what is being added by CGI in real time. Here's an example of a glitch where supposedly we didn't get to see what the CGI was, but NASA was showing the astronaut something that he was supposed to be holding in his hand. The hat on the right was also previously spinning and is also supposed to be CGI. In this video, you can actually see the current state of CGI, and it is very impressive. Shadows on objects look real. Reflections off of metal CGI objects are also realistic, but you'll also notice that he doesn't interact with anything physically in the environment. He's just in the CGI world. Real-time CGI interaction with objects isn't possible without wearing VR headsets, and the actual interactions are still not that impressive. With more detailed interactions with weightless objects, people would claim those are after effects, not in real time, to add realism to the weightlessness claim. Here you can actually hear Globebusters saying that this is why long shots with detailed CGI are never live, only rebroadcasts. When uh, where these guys, you know, move so freely, it's not in real time. It's not on live uh, um, events. 
is on documentary events because they have all the time to to post produce these things but when when they are live they just make one movement up and down <laughs> and talk front to the you know to the camera and they don't do anything else i mean now this is why blockbuster movies like jurassic park lord of the rings the hobbit and other movies of that sort do use cgi but it takes months though the objects are controlled by a human being many times in a motion tracking suit the cgi can be modified as to look normal in a natural environment but this process doesn't work in reverse and in real time it takes months of efforts to make it look real and sometimes it still doesn't well i'm a single topic kind of guy i don't like when a discussion takes a hard left turn of a well yeah but what about this so i invite you to take a look at this one video of footage of commander chris hadfield which you may have actually recognized from an earlier clip he spends 15 minutes interacting in real time with students from a school in canada answering his questions with no cuts no camera changes and no breaks this was live you cannot argue that it wasn't so what fakery could have been used in this video let's watch for a bit and see if you can spot anything it's really wet It's becoming a tube of water. It's becoming a tube of water. It looks very cool. The water's running up my hands a little bit. Hey, Tom, can you come grab me a towel, please? I got one on the wall. It's over here by Sevis. So I'd be on the other side of Sevis there, stuck in the wall. So the water is all over my hands. In fact, it rings out of the cloth into my hands. And if I let go of the cloth carefully, the water sort of has it stick to my hand. The surface tension of the water keeps it stuck to my hand. Thanks, Tom. Grab the microphone. Okay, so the uh, experiment worked beautifully. And the answer to the question is, the water squeezes out of the cloth, and then because of the surface tension of the water, it, um, it actually runs along the surface of the cloth and then up into my hand, almost like you had jello on your hands or gel on your hand, and it'll just stay there. Wonderful moisturizer on my hands. And the cloth doesn't really unravel itself. It just stays there floating like a... I will be generous and give the Flat Earth crowd that he may have been in a wire harness. You can have that. But what about everything else? This was much, much longer than 30 seconds. So the zero-G plane is out. It is absolutely live. So After Effects CGI could not have been used. And as I showed you before, active time CGI interface isn't this impressive. He actively interacted with weightless objects. So augmented reality couldn't explain it. Even the examples I've shown you of virtual reality couldn't pull this off in live time. Unless NASA has access to real-time augmented reality technology decades ahead of what Hollywood has, that can't be it. So how was the motion of the water around his hands achieved? How was his watch floating around his wrist? How did the microphone literally tumble in front of him when he let it go? And then his voice sounded like it was in a tin can as it floated away. And when he pulled it back, the water from his fingertips transferred to the microphone. Don't argue with me in the other videos. Don't claim one explanation unless it agrees with all observations from this video. My challenge today is anyone explain every aspect of this video and tell me how it was done. How was it not filmed in a continuous zero gravity environment, such as the space station in orbit around the Earth? If you comment below, I'll respond. Convince me that this video this video is fake and why thank you for joining me on this journey again this week i hope you enjoyed the information thank you to all my subscribers so far and if you like the information i'm providing 
I invite you to subscribe as well, because I've got some more good videos coming up. Take care until next week. Stay flat.